Bing bong, bong, bing bong, bong. This is Joe, the bearded historian. He'll tell you an interesting history. Be careful of his soldiers. They can be brats. This is Angel. She's an entity. She'll cause his us and plant her hands at you. This is Sue. She likes spirits, not the alcohol. She's the reason this channel exists. This is David. He likes fire trucks. He's here occasionally. Bing bong y bong, bing bong y bong, bing bong y bong. We preserve his story. Okay, this is a special video. Uh, April is Autism Awareness Month, and so we're doing a little piece, a glimpse into our lives with uh, autism. And, um,. <clears throat> So we hope you enjoy it. And now we're going to do shout out. Ready? Here we go. Shout out time. Here's a shout out just for you. You support me, so I support you. This shout out is for our friend. Spinny Wall of Death. Spinny. You spin me right round, baby, right round. And we got the Rooks. Okay. It's kicking it with the Rooks. And it says, come kick it with the rooks. We are down to earth, a beautifully blended family from um, Memphis uh, that loves to have fun. On this channel, you'll find logging, traveling, channels, pranks, uh, reactions, and much more. Um, the family right there. It's kind of a family channel, kind of like us. Um, they're very sportive, very cool people. So check them out, like, share, comment. Oh no, I sent you by. Good day. Alright, Mr. Butterbutt. What are we doing today, Mr. Butter? Well, today we're looking at National Autism Awareness Month. Uh, April every year. They celebrate it April 1st, April 30th. Now, autism is on its own little spectrum. Uh, referred to sometimes as just autism, autism spectrum disorder, um, sometimes autism spectrum condition. It's uh, identified as a loosely. De defined cluster of neurodevelopmental disorders characterized by challenges in social interaction, verbal and nonverbal communication, and often repetitive behaviors and restricted interests. Uh, other common features include unusual responses to sensory stimuli, uh, preference for sameness, or unusual adherence to routines. Most of you folks who have watched this channel do know our son is diagnosed with autism. Uh, we actually kind of lucked out because he was diagnosed rather early in his life. Yes, and uh, from what I've researched I've done, it's very important to do it as early as possible. Mm -hmm. And we had a great system that people that we had um, knew how to get the most out of David, and he's very high-functioning. So we were very lucky on that scale. Now, a couple of the other things that we did learn, and uh, <laughs> this has always been kind of a, a funny thing, is that not every single case of, uh, of the autism is the same. Uh, no, there's definitely. a lot of a lot of variables, a lot of different uh, people. One of my uh, former co-workers, his son is autistic, but is what's classified as nonverbal. He doesn't speak. David, <laughs> you get him alone, and he will tell you all he wants to about, about fire trucks, about NASCAR drivers, um, <laughs> tinkering with engines. All depends on what's on his mind. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways there. Uh, when they talk about, uh, you know, earlier in the list, when it was talking about uh, sensory stimuli, David can, what's funny is he loves fire trucks, but he can't stand the sirens. Oh, yes. Loud sounds are bad. Also, uh, when it, <laughs> what was rather odd is that there would be times that he used to would watch a, a type of cartoon, but he'd have to watch it with the sound off. <laughs> Dora was notorious about that. He could not have sound on the TV, but if it was on his phone, it could have sound. Yeah, watching the same thing on his phone, he was fine with. Watching it on TV was a no-go. Uh, SpongeBob was like that. Yes. Um, and, of course, what's funny is right now, one of his favorite things he likes to do is check out plays. Uh, cats. Musicals. Musicals. Especially musicals. musicals. Yes. He loves also to see them live when he gets a chance to, especially here at the, at the uh, now known as the Monument, when it was uh, the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center. Hopefully um, we'll be able to do another one soon. Yeah. Uh, things like social interactions. You know, David 
so he used to be a lot less into social interactions. Like, I, I remember the times when he used to take him to, like, the Civic Center. Oh, it would just completely <laughs> freak him out. He would turn around and try to get out of there. Or his favorite thing was just to book it north, as we used to call it. He would go to a, um, a play group that they used to have uh, for youth and family services, and the kids would be out playing outside, and I'd always tell them, keep an eye on David, because if you don't, he will he run. Will run. <laughs> and oh, we finally, no, we got it, we got it, we got it, it's fine. And we, we finally figured out that that was, you know, one of the calling cards for uh, for autism. Um, the communication, uh, again, he had kind of an interesting time with it, not only going from Youth and Family Services at Head Start uh, to Robbinsdale Elementary School, still a great school. Uh, he went to South Middle School, and then he went to Central, and uh, what's funny is he technically graduated in, uh, with his classmates, but because he also wound up going to what's known as uh, Workforce Development, he got a paper saying he graduated, but he won't get his official diploma until he leaves the, uh, the training center this year. But he, you know, he's a great little kid. He loves what he does. A great little man now. And not so little anymore. <laughs> no, not so little. He's, uh, surprisingly he was enough, never little. No, no. He, he, he's kind of been my, 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 my twin. He's actually taller than me, which is kind of a scary thought. But as we were, you know, discussing things about, you know, habits and things that David would do, uh, one of his favorite things that we used to do is uh, we would take him to Walmart at like two or three in the morning, and back when Walmart was a thing that was twenty four hours. hours, and he would run a certain pattern. Walmart was time. so great because he would get ahead of us, and we would be looking around the corner like, "Are you looking for him?" He went that way, mm -hmm. and you could literally cut through the store, and you'd see him coming up the aisle. We we had him memorized to that point. Um, but there were a lot of times that you know. We would see books on, you know, your autistic child and you or other things. And you'd read it for maybe about a chapter or two. And it's like, this is nothing like David. And it's because there are a lot of different ways different kids will act with autism. Um, now, there, there are people that talk about uh, savants, you know, kids that are specialized. And David has his, his couple treats that he does. Uh, one of his first things that he would do, he memorized firehouses in the Black Hills. He could to, literally tell you exactly how to get to anything in our city. Oh, what from firehouse? And without a map. I mean, here's a walking dispatch agent without a computer. And here in town, he'd be like, can we go see the firehouse? Sure. Which way do we got to go? He could tell you turn for turn at each corner how to get to the nearest firehouse. Um, and to this day, you know, like we went to, uh, down into Iowa to see that axe murder house. His biggest thrill was going to the Red Oak Firehouse, which I didn't mind either. You know, he, he, he enjoys seeing firehouses. Uh, we saw one, well, we were going to go see the one in Vassilia, but unfortunately they weren't open. Um, but, like, we went to Sioux Falls one year. We saw the, the zoo. We saw the butterfly pavilion. His thrill? Seeing a firehouse in Sioux Falls. Uh, it's just his way of operating. And then if we're out traveling somewhere and he's not with us, and we see a firehouse, usually we'll snap a photo and send it back to him. He gives us a thumbs up. So Yes, David's approval. Thumbs up. <laughs> yes. I don't have to say anything else. That's just him. Thumbs up. Now, more recently, uh, he has shown more interest in things like NASCAR which uh, he gets such a kick out of watching the crashes and the flips and stuff. Um, on his computers, he's got in his room. Uh, he's also highly technical because he has five phones and a tablet and two computers in there. Uh, one of the computers, he can run simulations of NASCARs. Uh, he also has a simulation where he can build firehouses. And here's a, you know, that's something that usually you'd go to college and work in architecture to try to design stuff like that. He's out here at age 21 building them in his room. So there's a lot of things that work on in, in between those ears that 
I haven't even gotten close to on yet. I'd love to see his world. Yeah, and the, there's a lot of things. He'll set up in his room, and unless he needs chicken, he's pretty much on his own planet there, which, you know, he likes his world, and so we are pleased to let him uh, enjoy it on his actions. Now, a little more history that we've got and uh, general knowledge. You know, autism is generally understood as a spectrum disorder, uh, manifests in different uh, ways in each person. Any autistic individual is likely to show some but not all of the char characteristics associated with it. Uh, the person may exhibit from varying degrees and frequencies. There's a large variation of support of needs of autistic people. There are some that are non-speaking, while others have proficient spoken language. Now, while psychiatry has traditionally classified autism as a neurodevelopmental disorder, the autism rights movement and some researchers see autism as part of neurodiversity, the natural diversity in human thinking and experience with strengths, differences, and weaknesses. So according to this view, autism is something that can be accommodated as a difference, not yes. cured or prevented. Yes. Autistic people still have a disability and can still have support needs, but need to, to be accommodated rather than cured. This view of the condition has led to significant controversy among those who are autistic alongside advocates, practitioners, and charities. Now, just like anything, there are many theories about what causes autism. Uh, it is highly heritable and believed to be mainly genetic, but there are genes are involved, and the environmental factors may also be relevant. Uh, the syndrome frequently co-occurs with other conditions, uh, like uh, ADHD, epilepsy, and intellectual disability. Uh, disagreements continue about questions what, whether uh, what should be included as part of the diagnosis, whether there are meaningful subtypes of autism, and the significance of autism-associated traits in the wider population. Uh, the combination of broader criteria and increased awareness has led to a trend of steadily increasing estimates of the Autism prevalence, causing a misconception that there is an autism epidemic, epidemic and perpetuating the myth that it is caused by vaccines. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, although there is no cure for autism, early behavioral intervention, like with David, can help children with speech delays gain self-care, social and language skills. Independent living is unlikely in those with higher support needs, so intervention for them requires finding and learning the alternative modes of communication. Uh, it is well established that the atypical antipsychotic drugs, repristerdone and eripredazole, alleviate the associated symptoms of irritability. David really doesn't get irritable, yeah, except... Yeah, he, he was a very, very calm child. Uh, very, very few tantrums, very few um, meltdowns, unless there was a change in his... Um, I don't want to say schedule because we don't really have a schedule, but in what he... His what, routine. His routine, thank you. Yeah. Um, if we told him something was going to happen and then it got delayed or canceled for some reason, that's when we had that kind of problem. Or if we had to clip nails. Nails or if he had a, a toothache. Sometimes that would cause him to become irritable and uh, grouchy and not... Many people didn't want to be around him then. Now, common characteristics... You know, pre-diagnosis uh, for many autistic people, characteristics first appear during infancy and childhood, follow a steady course without remission. Autistic people may be severely impaired in some res respects, but on the average or even superior in others. Uh, clinicians uh, consider assessment for ASD when a patient shows regular difficulties with social interaction or communication, restricted or repetitive behaviors. David would be a flapper. David was our bird. Still His a arm, bird yeah. His arms would go up and down. You'd be like, he's going to lift off any minute now. Uh, his uh, One of his other uh, little treats was he would have this verbal burst. And we would want to record this and run it through a, a, a it translation. just gibberish. I, I, all I can think of is he was talking too fast that his lips couldn't process what his brain was telling him. Um, resistance to change or restricted interests. Uh, these features are typically assessed with the following when appropriate. Problems in obtaining or sustaining employment or education. Difficulties in initiating and sustaining social relationships. Uh, connections with mental health or learning disability services. A history of neurodevelopmental conditions. Uh, again, ADHD or mental health conditions. Interestingly enough, also, um, 
David has a, a thing called an IEP that he gets every year. Uh, and it's basically kind of like a roadmap. It, it tells, you know, what his strengths, what he's doing good at, what he's been working on, what he still needs work with. Um, what's really interesting was last year, you know, they had this list of like about seven things for him to work on. And this year has been almost a complete uh, upgrade to everything that they have. In fact, a couple of times the teachers were like, is there a way we could snuggle him back in for one more year? Because, yes. <laughs> you know, sometimes he'll teach the classes. You know, he'll, he'll help students. He'll uh, help organize. He's got his own little job that he likes to do. Uh, he works at a retirement home helping to set tables. Um, very sociable, very active, you know. Um, this is common signs for the autism spectrum disorder, avoidance of eye contact. Little or no babbling as an infant. He didn't do a lot of talking, and I think that was one of the things that, why your mom was like, you should have him te tested. Mm -hmm. And of course, he didn't do a lot of interaction or looking at eyes at Youth and Family Services, which is why they suggested it. Right. Not showing interest in indicated objects. Delayed language skills, reduced interest in other children or caretakers, po possibly more interest in objects. Yes, he was very, he didn't do a lot of speaking until, I would say, I want to say like fifth grade. I mean, it wasn't that he didn't communicate, but from, I would say, probably through most of um, middle school, it was either his non his uh what we called yammering where was a whole bunch of sounds you couldn't make heads or tails of or one or two sentences mm -hmm. well then there was also the fact that uh, in first grade they brought in this one teacher who had no idea what she was doing but then when that teacher left and they got his favorite teacher back then david just bloomed again um difficulty playing reciprocal games like peekaboo Hyper or hyposensitivity to unusual response to smell, taste, texture, uh, appearance of things. Texture uh, was definitely a Yeah, thing. and to this day, you know, there are some things David just simply will not eat. What's funny is he, lo he loves to cook at school, but he won't eat the food, <laughs> which, is, which is really weird because uh, to this day, uh, David, when he goes shopping, he either will grab snacks or he'll grab chicken nuggets. And chicken nuggets have been with him since... I think Age he was like two. Two, yeah. Nuggets are his favorite thing. Yeah. And we have we have expanded his eating menu, mm -hmm. but it's still very, very limited in finding things. If, if there was an apocalypse or some kind of emergency. We'd steal a truck for a banquet or uh, Getting food for David Tyson. would be the, the my priority because the rest of us are fairly flexible. Although Angel's not as flexible as she used to be because... He's become more flexible. She's become less flexible. Right. Um, so children food would definitely be my, okay, we need to figure out how to get this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, resistance to changes in routines. We've discussed that. Repetitive, limited, or otherwise unusual usage of toys, like lining up toys. David loved dominoes. Oh, yes. David for had, years. had great success with dominoes. Lining them up, building towers, just all sorts of uh, clever little ways. Repetition of words and phrases. Uh, repetition of motions and movements. Birdie! Um, never have had a problem with self-harming. So, no. you know, we're, we're, we're easy there. Um, social and communication skills and social context. Autistic people may respond and behave differently than people without ASD. Uh, David, sometimes when I'll go pick him up uh, from school, you know, he'll get in the car. Some of his friends sometimes will come by. He does wave now. So, you know, he is slowly breaking out of that social bubble that he put up. Um, it was so funny because one time uh, one of his uh, friends that I guess actually uh, eats lunch with him says, hi. And, you know, and David's like, hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> but now the one thing that is also kind of interesting as far as, you know, autism goes is that it is more of a, you want know, to say a more modern of an illness, a, uh, a history is what I was reading on it. Uh, the first times that they were actually starting to come across it uh, was in 1910 by a Swiss psychiatrist, Eugen Bueller, and uh, he was defining symptoms of a new concept, interesting enough, uh, centered around schizophrenia. 
He derived it from the Greek word uh, auto and self and used it to mean uh, the self-admiration referring to the autistic withdrawal of the patient to his fantasies against which any influence from outside becomes an intolerable disturbance. Basically, get away from me. I don't want to talk to you. Right. Now, a Soviet child psychiatrist, Grunier Sakravreya, studied the autism, uh, autism extensively, and she described the syndrome in detail in Russian in 1925 and then in German in 1926. Uh, her descriptions aligned well with that for uh, autism spectrum in the DSM-5, which is a manual right. on uh, issues. Sakravreya did not believe the condition was a form of schizophrenia. She initially considered a Schizoid Personality Disorder of Childhood. Uh, Sarkovira's work would largely be unknown in the Anglosphere until the late 2010s. Well then. Now, 1930s and 1940s, two independently operating psychiatrists. This is funny. His name was Hans Osberger. Ah, that's funny. Of the Vienna University Hospital and Leo Kanner of the John Hopkins Hospital did much to increase the understanding of this condition. They both used the word autism to describe the patients they were studying in their clinical researches and practices. Uh, Osberger adopted Bueller's term, autistic psychopaths, in a 1938 <laughs> lecture. That You're sounds a psychopath. bad. I know. That what? sounds bad. Why did you take and throw this into the pa- picture? Um, but uh, he notably investigated a form of autism, which was later known as the Osberger syndrome. His work came to prominence among psychiatrists in the 1944 republishing of his paper, uh, and he suggested that autism was likely aware of Sarkovaria's work. Now, Kanner introduced the label Early Infantile Autism in a 1943 report of 11 children with striking behavioral similarities in the paper, Autistic Disturbances of Affective Contact. The term, Kanner Syndrome, was later coined to describe the children's condition in which distinguish them from differing symptoms of the Asperger's children. This condition also became known as the classic autism. Now, both Asperger and Kanner believe that autism was a separate condition from schizophrenia, seeing, a different, uh, seeing different differences significant between the two. Well, the first edition <coughs> in the 1950s of the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Standard Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders was released in 1952. Following uh, Bueller's nomenclature, it defined what is today considered autism as a childhood type, using the term autism to cover one of its sim- symptoms. And in the early 1950s, this is going to sound really weird, the refrigerator mother theory emerged as an accepted explanation for autism. The hypothesis was based on the idea that autistic behaviors stem from the emotional frigidity, lack of warmth, and cold, distance rejecting demeanor of a child's mother. Parents of children with the ASD experienced blame, guilt, and self-doubt, especially as their theory was embraced by the medical establishment and went largely unchallenged into the mid-1960s. While an inspiration for it, Leo Kanner himself rejected this theory. While serving as an assistant professor of psychology at the Indiana University School of Medicine from 1957 to 1962, Charles Furster employed errorless learning to instruct young autistic children how to speak. This is an example of what would later be known as applied behavioral analysis. In 1964, American psychologist Bernard Rimlin published the book Infantile Autism, The Syndrome, and its implications for a neural theory of behavior, which refuted the refrigerator theory. Instead, Rimlin suggested autism was a result of biochemical defects triggered by environmental assaults. It included a foreword by Leo Kanner. The book challenged the medical establishment's perception of autism. Rimlin's message resonated with parents who wanted to share their stories with him and ask for his advice. Now, from from the late 1950s, Charles Furster and others used this new science of behaviorism to teach people with autism and other mental conditions. This led to researchers at the University of Kansas to start the Journal of Applied Behavioral Analysis in 1968, establishing the concept ABA. Soon after, uh, ABA came to be used extensively with autistic children in the United States. 
Two major American professional associations would later be founded with the ABA practitioners with the Credential Behavioral Analysis Accrediting Board founded in 1998. 1970 also saw the release of the English translation of Gerhard Bosch's 1962 book, Infantile Autism, a clinical and phenomenological anthropological investigation taking language as the guide. Now, that's a heck of a title. That is a title. Uh, I think you go all the way from one part of the book to the back. And it was translated by Derek and Ingot Jordan, which included an introduction from Bruno Bethlehem. It used the term Asperger's syndrome to describe the symptoms of Asperger's patients. Now, British researchers Lorna Wing of the Institute of Psychiatry in London used the term Asperger's syndrome in 1976, identifying that there were many people with autistic traits who had good language skills. Considering the wide difference of autistic traits in different people, Wing and Judith Gold coined the term autism spectrum in their 1979 paper, Severe Impairments of Social Interaction and Associated Abnormalities in Children, Epidemiology and Classification. Now, the DSM-3 uh, came out in 1980 and redefined the childhood type of schizophrenia as three kinds of pervasive de developmental disorders. Infantile autism began before a child was 30 months old, and child onset pervasive development disorder began between 30 months and 12 years. A third variety, atypical pervasive development disorder, was similar but lesser than the other two and could begin at any time. Lorna Wing's uh, February 1981 publication of a series of case studies, the Asperger Syndrome, a clinical account, greatly increased awareness <coughs> of the existence of normal and high IQ people with autistic traits by clinicians. She also greatly increased the awareness of the Hans Osberger's work. Now, Norwegian-American psychologist Ivar Lovas completed the US UCLA Young Autism Project in 1987, defining a new method of ABA. It is sometimes called the Lavas Method Model or Program and combines the UCL, UCLA model intervention and has become the primary form of early intensive behavior intervention and is now often referred to by that name as well. Now, the DSM-3R merged infantile autism with childhood onset pervasive development disorder as the new autistic disorder. This manual provided a checklist for this condition. It broadened the range of neurotypes that were considered autistic by cl clinicians. The DSM's third PDD category was renamed pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. Kind of throw the uh, ball up in the air and see who comes Ooh. back down. Popular American movie Rain Man was released in 1988. Its titular character was an autistic man. Bernard Rimland was consulted on how the character was portrayed. The movie did much to define public understanding of the condition. So, I thought he had a different condition. Nope. Interesting. Yeah. Social skill teaching method, social stories, began its development in 1989 by an American teacher, Carol Gray. A study of Ontario autism support workers in 2011 found that 58% uh, of support programs were influenced by her. Now, American Jim Sinclair was credited with the first person to communicate the anti-cure for autism rights perspective in the late 1980s. In 1992, Sinclair co-founded the Autism Network International, an organization that publishes newsletters written by and for autistic people. This grew into the autism rights movement. Now, DSM-4, Autistic Disorder and the Asperger uh, Syndrome and other conditions, uh, you know, started reflecting in 1994 as a better understanding of diversity of the autistic experience. The DSM-4 included a number of newly defined PDD conditions. Uh, the disorder was redefined and supplemented with the new conditions, Asperger Syndrome, Rett Syndrome, and Childhood Dis Disintegrative Disorder. They're disintegrating people. I know. Um, <coughs> The PDD NOS remain. The definition of Asperger's syndrome includes speech and language difficulties. Um, American animal behaviorist Tample Grandin came to prominence in 1995 with the publishing of her popular book, Thinking in Pictures My Life with Autism. She later would become a board member of the Autism Society of America. Now, the term neurodiversity was coined in 1998 by an Australian sociologist, Judy Singer, an American self advocate. 
uh, Jean Meriden. Neurodiversity is the idea that people can think differ differently to the norm without those differences being a medical problem. The influ in influential book, Asperger's Syndrome, A Guide for Parents and Professionals, was published by the British-Australian psychologist Tony Atwood in 1998. Atwood would go on to publish widely on autistic types. A survey of Ontar Ontario autism support workers in 2010 found that 52% of their support programs were influenced by him. Also in 1998, the British doctor Andrew Wakefield published a controversial paper claiming a link between vaccines and autism, and it was subsequently found to be fraudulent, idiot. Oops. Now, the most recent DSM uh, that I find here is the 2000 TR, containing an almost complete rewrite of the definition Asperger's Syndrome, notably, and now no longer included speech and language difficulties. In 2003, the British child psychologist Elizabeth Newson at the University of Nottingham published an article in the Archives of Disease and Childhood Journal arguing that pathological demand of voices be recognized as a unique profile within the autism spectrum. She had seen that pattern of PDA in children in 1980. She believed that autistic people with pronounced PDA syndromes tend to behave quite differently than those who don't. Autism Specialist uh, Employment Services Company Special Stern was founded by the Danish IT worker Thorkel Son in 2003 and has gone on to operate in various parts of Europe, North America, and Australia. Now, World Autism Awareness Day was established by the United Nations 2007, lighting the buildings with blue light at night as a common means of awareness. Raising on this day, Autism Speaks has embraced it. The character Sheldon Cooper first, applied on the, first appeared in the American television in 2007, in the popular sitcom Big Bang Theory. Man. While he is not explicitly autistic, according to the actor who plays him as an adult, the character couldn't display more traits of Asperger's Syndrome. Uh, the concept was also of double empathy problem was conceived in 2012 by British psychologist Damien Milton. The idea proposes that interaction issues between autistic and non-autistic peoples are at least in part because of two types of people think differently from each other. Understanding other people from their own group, but have difficulty understanding that people think differently. The contrast with the idea that interaction issues are due to autistic people having lesser social understanding abilities than non-autistic people. And the Asperger's Secret Book of Social Rules, the Ooh, handbook of not-so-obvious guidelines for teens and tweens, was published by American social worker Jennifer, o Jennifer Cook O'Toole in 2012. It would win the Autism Society of America's Temple Grandin Outstanding Literary Work of the Year. Jennifer will go on to write a number of other books about autism. Now, going through the general information, uh, one of the more uh, recent ones that we tend to like is uh, The Good Doctor. Oh, yes. With Sean as a, uh, a surgeon who... It, it's, it's kind of fun because they actually do a good visual representation, how we like to imagine how David's world works sometimes. Right, with the pictures and stuff. Yeah, because when, when you sit there, you know, early on, one of the things we always loved to say with David was, we would love to go visit his world sometime. Because you can only imagine what he sees in the world as he operates. You know, uh, like when he's looking at a NASCAR, he looks at all the different ways that a NASCAR can be driven, uh, how it could be safer, how a car operates when it flips. He his mind goes through all of those different angles and stuff, and it, it's 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 cool. Um, you know, and to that degree, you know, to me personally, I think of autism is almost like a, you know, it's a new way of people thinking. It's 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 a uh, it's an evolution of how the mind works. A lot of reasons why people don't understand it is because our brains don't think that way. You know, while we're busy looking at, you know, A to Z, all of his mind is studying A through E, and he's getting really good at those departments. And, you know, one of the things that to, I got to take away from the IEP this year that was really kind of cool is that the uh, we have a program here in town called Black Hills Works, and it's for special needs people. And the lady said, 
you know, for everything that goes on at some of these businesses and these places can't find workers, they would be an ideal worker because, you know, he might be a little slower, but once you get him going, get him locked in and get him going, he's fine. He knows exactly what he needs to do. He does it and he's doing it at a good pace. And unlike, you know, somebody who might be busy playing on their phone or, you know, get bored and leave after a couple weeks, David is happy with what he does. He's worked at uh, West River Electric. He's worked at, like I was saying, a retirement place. He even uh, did almost a full uh, couple semesters at a pizza ranch but he, he didn't care for the volume inside the place much so but again you know the big thing for you know autistic people is finding that niche and it's what a lot of us look for anymore you know whether it's in a job uh with how you take and operate in life is if they find a niche let them thrive because with david it's been amazing to watch this journey for 21 years. But this has been Joe for the Bud Files. You folks have a good evening, and we'll talk to you later. Night-night.